Hi everyone, Dave here again with another model rocket build. Today we're building this Estes kit, and I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it. If it's supposed to be Tigris and it's just spelled wrong, or maybe it's Tigres. Uh, but whatever it is, it's a fairly easy to build rocket. Um, the nice thing about it is everything is pre-colored, so you don't have to paint it. And this should go together in about half an hour to an hour, and probably can fly about two hours after that. So let's go through quickly here and check and make sure all our parts are here. All right, so we do have our pre-colored body tube, plastic nose cone. The other end of the nose cone is probably in here. Um, we have some nice self-stick decals that will go on last. And then we've got this little parts bag here of assorted stuff. Advertisements for the NAR, always good. All right, we've got a parachute, one part of the fin can and engine mount, and the other part. This is the launch guide that'll take the place of a standard launch lug. Let's see, one, two, three, four fins. A generous shock cord. And then here's the rest of it. Um, we've got the back end of the nose cone here and this is the screw-on engine retainer I really like these and then we've got a clear decal here um, that I suspect is going to reinforce the launch lug yes it is okay so it looks like we have everything um, for this kit we're going to meet, need some scissors a hobby knife some plastic cement, um, some general purpose glue, either white or yellow glue, and probably just a little bit of masking tape to make adjustments here. So our first step is going to be assembling the fin can that's also the motor mount here. And this model has a lot of plastic parts, so make sure you've got a good high quality plastic cement. Uh, if you've got a choice between regular cement and the less toxic or non-toxic one, you actually want the more toxic one. Um, the other ones just don't hold as well. And in this particular case, this part of the model really needs to hold really strongly because it's going to hold the fins in place, but more importantly, it's going to hold the motor in place. And something I've noticed in kits that have this type of a fin can and combination uh, motor mount is that when you put the motor in, it puts some stress on here and tries to split the seams there. Okay. Now normally this would go on like this and it's going to help hold it together but you want to have really good uh, glue joints here without having them so thick and runny and goopy that they interfere with either the fins or the motor. So we'll open this back up and what we're going to do is go ahead and put some glue along here. Now we want to avoid getting glue down in these slots where the fins go. We'll put glue on those later when the fins go in. But for now, we just want to, we want to get these seams here and down along here. Um, being very careful with these that we don't get a lot of glue up in the threads here. So. Although it's straightforward, you do have to be careful about how much and where your glue goes. Um, you can also use a brush-on type glue like this, uh, as long as it actually is a plastic cement. Uh, because a true plastic cement actually partially melts the plastic, and then that's what welds it on to the other side here. Okay, and then if you get one of these with a brush applicator, um, often that gives you more control. So I'm going to try this. I just got this a, a day or two ago. I haven't tried it yet, so this is a good time. Right, so this does give me pretty good control. Um, the drawback to this one is it's going to evaporate pretty quickly. So you have to be relatively fast. Again, I'm not getting down into the actual fin slots there. I 
I'm just gluing one side. The other side will press into this. Okay, make sure that, as I said, this stuff evaporates really quickly, so I want to make sure that everything is still wet. Now I'm going to go ahead and fit these together. Okay, and now I'm just going to put some pressure on here and hold that for about 30 seconds. And when we come back here, after this has dried for at least 10 minutes, then we'll put the fins on. Okay, this is a step here, although most of this rocket goes together pretty quickly. Um, this step here is pretty critical just because of the stresses that are going to be put on this. So do go ahead and wait. Give this enough time to fully set up before we go on to the fins. My fin can is still drying, but I'm going to jump ahead here to the launch lug attachment part of the instructions and then we'll come back to do the fins and the first thing we need to do is draw a line down the length of the body tube and the classic way to do this is to stick the body tube up against a, a door frame or a, some molding and use that as a straight edge for the purposes of my video here I'm going to use this uh, body tube marking guide that uh, Estes uh, puts out and the nice thing about this is one it's portable so I can put it under here um, but also it has lots of different heights of rails here that allow you to do a lot of different body tubes so I'm going to stick mine on here like this and I'm going to draw a light pencil line here all the way down the length. You don't want this too heavy. You want it just light enough that you can see it. Um, because we're going to need to erase this after we get the launch lug put in place. Uh, because since this is already pre-colored, unless you're going to go ahead and paint it anyway, uh, you want to get rid of that line. So the next thing we need to do is measure from one end, um, and this will be become the aft end where the fins go, one and a half inches or 3.8 centimeters. Okay, so that's going to put it right here. So I'm just going to make a little cross mark there that's going to cross over. The line and my line is really faint so if you can't see it, it is actually there and then the next thing we're going to do is take the actual launch lug assembly here and we're going to place this so that these two nubs here so there, there are two um, nubs that poke out from this we're going to put one of them where our inch and a half mark was and then we're just going to line this up along the tube. And now we're just going to press down on it. And this takes a little bit more coordination. All right, so I'm going to get that one there and this one here. All right, so I'm just pressing down. The idea here is just to make an indentation in the tube so that you know where the holes are going to go. So once we've got that, then we're going to make a little cross-hatched hole where those indentations were. Okay, so there's one. OK, 
Okay, and then once you've got those, you can test this again. What we're going to do now is press those little nubs into our cross hatches and actually force them through the body tube. Now be careful you don't collapse the body tube here. Um, for the lower one at least, you can put a finger behind that. And for this one, I'm going to first kind of use this to wrench it open a little bit. There we go. Okay, and here it feels like I'm off just a little bit. And if that's the case, just extend your cut down a little bit more. And it doesn't matter which end goes where, that it should be equidistant. So you want to make sure at this point that it actually does fit and it's straight along the line. And now according to the instructions, they want to use the, the tube type plastic cement um, and just make a line of it along here. I'm going to use super glue instead uh, because the gel type of super glue is better at binding plastic to cardboard and paper. If you don't have this, go ahead and just use the model glue. Right, make sure you get some right here and go just a little bit beyond the holes. Now again with super glue this bonds instantly to skin so don't get it on your skin. Now again, it's really hard to press this too hard without collapsing the tube. But once we've got it in here, then we have this clear sticker. And what we're going to do with this is place it across the launch guide here to help hold it in place. So this is going to help reinforce it. And you want to be careful with this, and this is always difficult for me mainly because I have fairly thick fingers. But what we want to do here is center this as much as possible and then instead of letting this immediately come down, it might be a little bit off but it's pretty close, what we want to do is kind of tuck it in along the edges here first So you can just use your fingernail. Um, if you just stretch it across, you're going to end up with a big air gap here, and it's going to tend to want to come off again. And then once you've got that in, go ahead and smooth out the rest of that sticker here. So this will just help reinforce the glue and give us a stronger launch guide there. Okay, and then we can come back and make sure everything's in where it should be. If you had glue coming out along the edges here, you can just take a tissue and very carefully wipe that up. Uh, you want to be careful not to smear it around too much or you'll end up making black and orange streaks uh, because the glue can actually dissolve the plastic and the, the finish on this. So now we're going back up to where we were before in the instructions and get ready to put the fins on. Um, before you do it, you want to check and make sure there aren't any little pieces of flash, which is just extra plastic that sometimes gets left on here from the molding process. Uh, we just don't want to have that in the way. These all look pretty clean. So that's a good idea. If you do see something that might be in the way, you can just trim that off. Okay, all these look really nice and clean. That's good. So coming back here, um, what we want to do is now use our plastic cement again. And according to the instructions, they're just adding the cement here. All right, and the idea is that these will go in like 
this. Oh, backwards, that's why it's not going in. Okay, so the, the screw part should be going toward the back. Right, so these go in here and then slide up. Um, and these are pretty snug, so I would go ahead and dry fit these before you do anything else. Just so you're going to be aware of how easy or hard those are going to slide in. Okay, so the idea here, the way they're showing the glue is, is it's not here on the bases, but along the sides of it. Okay, because if you just put it here on the, on the base of these tabs, that's what's fitting through here, and it doesn't actually contact anything. Okay, um, you could even trying to see how this is going to work. If you use the um, runnier kind of the cement like this, you would probably even just put it here, here, and just put it along these articulating surfaces, um, and then maybe just a little bit in here. So I'm going to try that, and if it doesn't work, then you'll probably never even see this video. Now again, the disadvantage of this stuff is that you have to do it really quickly. It does tend to dry up. But you don't want to get so much that it runs into somewhere that it shouldn't be. Take this, slide that in, All right, and mainly I need to make sure that it clears the threads here, because this is still going to have to go on in the back. All right, so you don't want it hanging down. And so that's why I said go ahead and dry fit all your pieces on here beforehand to make sure that it's going to clear properly. I'm dry fitting mine one at a time, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. All right, so this one, oh, all right. Now, did you see that? It opened up here, uh, which means I haven't actually let this dry long enough. So now what I have to do is come back in, and if this happens to you, and it may, all right, just go ahead and add some more cement here. And it means we need to be a little more patient. So I'm going to put that back together. And so I'm going to leave this for a while, turn off the video and magically come back when it's all done. Um, but I will go ahead and after this is back to the way it should be, I'm going to finish putting the rest of the fins on. Uh, you can do the same thing. I said, just like we did up here. Um, just be careful, again, with the the ones along the seams here, those are weak points, and so be extra careful putting those on. So when we come back, I'll have this all assembled, and we'll move on to the body tube. So I've got all my fins on now, and you notice here what I ended up doing was to help reinforce the glue joints on the fin can. I simply wrapped the ends in a little bit of masking tape. And this just gives me some temporary strength there, just in case the, the joints were still a little bit weak. Um, but once the fins are in and the cement has set on them, they'll actually help reinforce the fin can joints. Also, if when you are dry fitting these, uh, if they're too tight, um, you can use some uh, fine sandpaper and just very lightly brush the inside ridges there just to knock them down a little bit. Um, mine were snug but I didn't have to do any sanding there but that's something uh, hopefully you're watching this ahead of time before building this so that if you have that problem that's the solution is just use a little bit of sandpaper and sand off a very small amount of plastic and try refitting them again. Uh, you may also find that the 
plastic cement temporarily and very temporarily acts as a lubricant. Uh, and so it'll give you a little bit easier time of pushing these in, but only for a few seconds. After that, it'll start locking and make it more difficult. Okay, so our next step now is to attach our fin can to the body tube. And this is going to go on the, the end closest to our launch lug assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. And for now, I'm going to leave the, the aft one on there just as a little bit of insurance. But once this is in the body tube, the body tube itself will help act to keep it together. Okay, so I'm just going to dry fit this first of all. And so this is just going to go right into here. Um, if you have trouble getting this to go in smoothly, just take your thumbnail or a fingernail and just run that around the inside of the body tube. And this just makes a, a little bit of a more open lip on there and it'll make inserting it easier. Okay, so it's going to go in like this. The main thing you have to worry about here is that the launch lug should be centered between two of the fins. You don't want a fin in the way of the launch lug or you won't be able to put this on a launch pad. So it should end up looking like this. Okay, um, And here again, they recommend using um, plastic model cement, the thick type here. If you have it, this is another good place to use a gel type of cyanoacrylate or super glue. Again, because it does a better job of bonding plastic to cardboard and paper. Um, we're just going to run a bead around the inside of this. And you can be pretty generous with this uh, because this is going to be the, the locking point for the fins to the body tube. And any excess will simply get pushed up into the tube. It won't interfere with the fins or the motor mount here. Okay, so now I'm just going to put this in. Make sure it's centered. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of a twist back and forth here to help spread the glue evenly and then bring that up to make sure I'm centered and that part's done. While the glue is drying on the fins in the fin can, now we can go to the shock cord and for this we'll need to cut out the shock cord mount here on the front. Uh, if you don't want to cut up your instructions just make a photocopy of this. Um, or you can even just cut out a piece of paper that's about the same shape. Okay, and they actually did plan this a little bit so that when you cut it out you still have the instructions for putting the mount in. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take the shock cord. This is a nice generous shock cord. I like when they do that. Long shock cords are good. And what we'll end up doing here is I'm going to place this at a little bit of an angle over the two and three regions. Um, we're going to put a layer of glue on here, and then we're going to fold the one to the two, and then the two to the three, trapping the shock cord within the mount. Here you can use either white glue or wood glue. Um, the wood glue will set up faster and stronger, so I'm going to use it. Um, you want to you don't want it to be sloppy here, but you want enough glue to completely cover this. And if you don't get it all the way to the edges, that's fine because we're going to squeeze out the excess. And it's a good idea to have some tissues or some paper towels handy as this does get your fingers a bit messy. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do again is place this over the two and the three in the glue and at a little bit of an angle because this way when I fold this part of the shock cord over it'll lay beside the part over the three instead of directly over it and that will give us more room in the body too. So now I'm just going to fold the one section over into the two and 
And then I'm going to fold that entirely over into the three. Okay, you see some glue coming out. That's why I'm doing this over the instructions. Make sure you've got a protected surface here. Okay, and so now the shock cord is laying here and here. And if you've got a little space, you can move this over now. And I'm going to take this whole thing. And I'm going to squeeze all the glue to the edges. And then I'm going to give it a bend. Now I'm going to take this excess off. Now, but with the wood glue especially, it's going to start getting sticky right away. <clears throat> and now I'm just going to give this some curvature because this face is going to go to the inside of the body tube. Okay, and once this is set up enough that it's not coming apart, you can go ahead and move on to this next step. Um, like I said, if you're using wood glue, this can go fairly quickly. All right, so now I'm going to put a layer of glue here. And again, I'm going to smear this all over because this is going to be the anchor point between the shock cord and the rocket. Okay, now inside, this needs to go down at least an inch and a half. And the reason for that is to make sure that none of the nose cone shoulder here that's going to be down inside, um, you don't want to have any of that impacting the, the shock cord mount or the nose cone may get stuck. Um, so at least an inch and a half. I like to go as far down as my fingers will let me. And what I'm going to do now is just slide this with the glue side up, not touching anything yet, it's just hanging on the edges. I'm going to move that down. Okay, and now I'm going to flip the whole thing over so that now the glue side falls down onto the inside of the rocket. And I'm going to go ahead and push this down farther if I can, and then stick my finger down as far as I can go. And now using my other hand as a brace, I'm just squishing all of that gluey mount nice and evenly onto the inside of the rocket. Okay, you probably can't see this easily. Okay, but now that's down inside there. And I'm just going to let this uh, put aside for a few minutes and let that dry. Uh, again, with the wood glue, it dries fairly quickly. And when we come back, we will put to, uh, the nose cone together and then put the parachute on. While the glue on the shock cord mount is drying, we can go ahead and do the nose cone. And so this comes in two pieces. The, the base piece here has to be glued in. And for this, we're going to use the regular, relatively thick plastic cement. Here I'm just going to run a bead right around the inside edge. And any excess here will get pushed forward. And don't get too much. I have found if you get a really big glob of glue in there, it can actually melt the nose cone. And I'm just going to take this and put that in and give it a, a couple of turns here to distribute the glue well. Um, this does not fit really snugly, so you want to make sure that it's got glue all the way through its surfaces. And now we'll just hold on to this for a few seconds and then I'll set it aside to let it dry. <clears throat> if we look ahead, the next part is to assemble the parachute and you can do it the way they show here and permanently attach it to the nose cone. Um, I'm going to show you a different way using a uh, snap swivel that will allow us to remove the parachute or change out the parachute if we need a bigger one or a smaller one or just for storage when we don't want to keep the parachute all crumpled up inside. Our parachute comes in this little bag here. We can cut it open. And the shroud lines are already attached, so we don't have to do that little bit of tedious work. And so just open this up and just make sure that everything's intact. 
and then gather the shroud lines here. So we want to get each one individually first. Okay. And so I'm just going to hook these all around one finger. And then I'm going to take the middle of the parachute here and then pull the shroud lines taut. And this should give us equal length shroud lines throughout. There shouldn't be any loose ones here. And now I'm just going to gather a loop here at the end. And then take a snap swivel. And this is the same thing you can get at a sporting goods store in the fishing department. And we're going to put that loop of shroud lines through the swivel side. Okay, bring that through until we have a, a loop again here. And then I'm going to pass the entire swivel through that loop and bring it down. And that's going to form a nice knot there on the snap swivel. And if we come back and make sure that we're still reasonably taut, it looks like one's a little bit slack there, but it's not enough to worry about. Um, if you do need to readjust it, you can simply pull this knot open, readjust the shroud lines, and do it again. So that now we can take this, open it up, and attach it to the eye of the nose cone here. And this is actually what determines how big your snap swivel needs to be. Um, the rest of it, the swivel part here, um, even if you had a smaller one, is still more than strong enough to handle the stresses of this rocket. The, the determining factor is how big this is, and so you'll need a snap that can fit around the eye here of the nose cone. And depending on your nose cone, um, some of these have a smaller eye, so you could use a smaller snap swivel. Some have a bigger one, you might have to get a bigger one than this. The good part is that these things are not very expensive. You can get a pack of 10 to 20, depending on the size, for about $2. Um, and that'll be enough for quite a few rockets. And as I said, this gives us the ability now to change this out. Um, so if you're just displaying your rocket and you're not going to launch it anytime soon, you might want to put the, the parachute away someplace else where it doesn't get all crumpled up. Uh, because if you leave this inside a rocket for a long period of time, it kind of takes on the, the crumpliness of however you put the chute in there. And it takes a bit of effort to get it back to where it's nice and openable again. Okay, So I usually store my rockets without the parachutes, and I simply keep these in a box. And then when I go to launch, I can decide which parachute I need. Okay, So I'll set that aside. Our last task here structurally is to put the shock cord on. And this is simply done by putting in a couple of half hitches or a double overhand knot here. And go ahead and cinch that down really well. So if you, you tighten that, really stretch that out, and then when, as it relaxes, then actually helps keep your knot tight. And then here you can add just a little bit of white glue to the knot just for a little extra security. Okay, and you can kind of stretch that again, work it in. And just as that dries, it'll just help keep that knot from coming undone. I'm going to cut off some of this. Don't cut it all the way down to the knot. Leave it a little bit of the cord there. And then I can just take my finger and work that glue around in there. And the white glue um, will remain slightly flexible, so it won't just crack off immediately. Uh, but it just keeps that knot a little bit more secure. Oop. Okay, so now we see my glue in there was not dried completely. Fortunately, that's an easy fix. Okay, so now I just need to let all of my glue dry. And the last thing to do here is to put the decals on. And so you can come back to the, the package front um, and put them on the way they show, uh, or you can put them on however you like. This is your rocket, be creative. Uh, you don't need to, need to follow the, the recommended ones here. Follow your own creativity, your own spirit there, and when we come back here, we'll take a look at the finished product. So this is my finished Tigris, 
and I pretty much went with the scheme shown on the packaging. I did have a little bit of trouble where the main decal tore as I took it off, so you see a little bit of a crack there. Uh, and on my rockets, I've, I get these pre-made stickers that will allow me to uh, hopefully get a rocket back if it ends up in someone's yard or a tree somewhere. All right, one last thing to do with this is to give what's called a shake test. So we want to just shake it like this and make sure the nose cone doesn't come out. Okay. Um, this has got just about the right amount of snugness, so we don't want it so tight that it won't be blown out by the ejection charge, but at the same time we don't want it so loose that it might come off in flight. Now if it doesn't pass the shake test here and this comes out, then we can simply take a little bit of masking tape and add that to the shoulder here. Um, start with about half the circumference, see if that fixes it. Um, if it's still loose, then try the whole circumference and just add it on a little bit at a time. Okay. Now if it's really tight, then the other thing you can do is take some sandpaper and sand down these little ridges here. Um, they're actually there to increase the friction. So if you have too much friction, you can sand those down. Okay, this was a fun build and relatively quick and easy. And I hope you have a good flight with it.